I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. You got a fun video with the Kleber on Shatter, and here's the strategy behind it. Before we begin, like, subscribe, bell button, low. Appreciate all the support. 2,000 subs, doing a free premium DD giveaway. So let's get to it. So this map, I think we've getting, been getting a lot in clan battles, and, and there's so many strategies. I like it because of this center island right here. Pretty, pretty awesome. These group of islands in the middle really bring out a lot of cool and unique strategies. But for this one, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to do a massive not a lemming train but a kind of a coordinated attack to kind of uh, engulf the bravo charlie caps because those are the ones that we wanted the most for this particular strategy i'm in yellow also in the Kleber. i think it man lately i've been uh, playing Kleber, and in this video i have two videos regarding this map on both sides of the aisle and man this thing is awesome i did not realize how powerful drew i mean Kleber is uh, i've seen a lot of people play it back in, in the past and i really took it for granted but i have to say that now with the new legendary mod that allows you to have such a small concealment and being undetected, you can really do some incredible pushes. And it's uh, I'll just take a uh, an example of that today and show you what it's like. But what we're going to do is basically a fast push all the way around uh, the uh, Charlie cap. And that, that's exactly what the Clever is good at. It can literally go in super quick, use its speed, getting up to 55 knots and just speed dashing it all the way around to not only get good accurate spotting like right here, but also being you know, flanking the enemy. And did, I did not realize, but the Clever guns are large enough 139 millimeters that actually can citadel cruisers, especially at certain ranges. Light cruisers are really, really good. But even like things like Moskvas and Stalingrads, if you get close enough and at certain angles, man, you can get some punishing, um, you know, uh, broadsides like this, like I'm doing right here. But also, since we're so fast and get these flanks going, with the new concealment of 6.2 kilometers, you can really get in there and really uh, torp uh, the crap out of a lot of people. And it's really devastating to see. So let's take a look at this strategy right here, the Kleber. You've already seen that's kind of the routing we're going to take with the Kleber. The other, uh, what we wanted to plan on doing is giving a diversion by going into Alpha Cap, maybe getting a small destroyer, get in there, maybe distract them a little bit and draw them in to over push Alpha. So most of the time I've seen guys kind of like go to the flanks and probably try to go in around Alpha. So that will take time going around, especially slow of battleships and cruisers. Meanwhile, the bulk of the force will reunite in group right here and go right down the center right here. So we're going to have the two cruisers and as well as the battleship proceed down the center as well as the two cruisers engulf the the gap right here and that is going to allow us to really overwhelm charlie it doesn't and from multiple angles here so we could possibly cook, come around this island we could go down the center here and we can also overwhelm charlie and just take it by force obviously one of the destroyers is over here to watch our flank because most of the time if there's a dd here it usually kind of slows down the advance giving us time to overwhelm bravo and then charlie and then overwhelm and then flank if we have time flank into alpha from the south now the cool thing about this also is that this center gap gives us the opportunity to have these ships turn back around and then have multiple fields of fire right back into the center if the a uh, cap decides to push into uh, either tries to make a decision as to where we're going to go bravo or charlie they're going to have to come through this center gap and they'll either divert to the north which uh, takes time or they'll come to the center which is multiple fields of fire and then they're going to get swooped in and taken in from charlie so we'll see how this kind of plays out with Kleber. it's pretty awesome how it actually works out but again i like these concentrated fire mass pushes because and again it's not necessarily a lemming train because we're all splitting off and taking down lanes but it, it opens up opportunities for broadsides citadels and flanks so let's take a look at it hope you enjoy all right team here we are so we have uh, basically moved out to the flank here with uh the club bear and we're going to get some spotting going right off the bat and you can see that our team is already battleship pushing down the center you're going to have two the crew cruisers coming around the island, making an a just slight adjustment rather than going straight down the gap because now we spotted where the enemy's at. And you can see the Kleber is excellent now with a 6.2 concealment, which means that we're not spotted uh, from the mi you know from the moon right now. We're actually able to actually push in and be concealed and be that sneaky, fast destroyer that everybody hates. And I really enjoy it now. But the Kleber, man, this thing is so powerful. You can really now... Although the gun reload is slower, you can still sneak up on destroyers and use your uh, reload booster for your guns and get it down to 50%. So around like a four to five second reload, which is bearable. It's not the worst, um, but it's a little bit better than 10 second reloads now with this new legendary mod. But man, can you really bully destroyers now? 
Um, because now you're by the time they spot you, they're overwhelmed. They're like, oh my gosh, a club at 6.2. They were usually expecting a club being spotted at out to seven and a half or maybe eight if you didn't build for it. But man, it really catches a lot of destroyer players off guard uh, because they weren't really expecting it to be that quick. And really, it's incredible as to what it can do. And you're just going to see the, uh, the power of what it can do. We're going to sneak up on this old destroyer right here. He's not thinking his flank is overwhelmed. He didn't think a destroyer would get out that fast. And boom, he's actually full turned in. And you can see he's overwhelmed now. And look at the guns right here. I'm taking 2,600. And then we pop the reload booster. We're getting those guns and reloads down. And then the Kleber has that French saturation, which helps us out a lot. We also get support from our other cruisers. Again, it's always nice having a, a cruiser, radar cruiser, helping the destroyer out, take on another destroyer right there. Notice the long reload times on this one, and we just need one more shot, and he it goes Good down. Job, so right there, uh, destroyer player goes down. Now, we always nose into a destroyer because we know they torp, right? So you always torpedoes. assume they torpedo you. Yep, there are the torpedoes. So you always nose in to mitigate any kind of unnecessary damage in that regard. So now we've overrun. Look at our our, uh, our team. We're flying. We're going right through the gap of the the two islands of right above Charlie. We got the battleship overwhelming. We have the two cruisers going in. I love overwhelming caps like this because it it just takes every single angle that away from the enemy and allows us to have a destroyer on the flanks. The team pushes in, and we're actually playing with a storm and uh, typhoon. I've been murking a lot with storm and typhoon players, and it's it's really great to see different aspects and different uh, perspectives of how their teams play and it's really awesome again it has nothing to do with the ship you pick it's really much about how the teamwork unfolds and how you guys work together and communi communicate together and move as one cohesive unit um, like I said uh, it, it really does not matter what ship you pick it's just how you guys employ it together uh, I like the Kleber in these situations because it gives that speed and the guns and the torpedoes and here is a great example of the power of these torpedoes Again, we've already overwhelmed Bravo and Charlie. Uh, it's pre pretty much just picking one person at a time. Notice, again, the strategy is the, the team, ha the enemy team has to go through the middle uh, if they elect to do that. But they have to do it to, uh, in, in a way that it really just does not give them very good fields of fire. Uh, everybody's pretty much focusing just one by one. You don't have to do much to think about this. The ships have to go to the gap or they have to go to the north through a gap or to the south. And really, they're just picked off one by one. And this is a cool display of the power of the Kleber. Uh, look at that. You can get uh, nice, juicy broadsides. I, unfortunately, we're not close enough to get these citadels, but there's a citadel right there. There's an example where the Kleber can do. It's really incredible that a little destroyer can do that. Uh, unfortunately, the reload's just not there to get you. Now, once you get closer, yeah, you're going to have to get those correct angles of course but hey this is when we switch to the good old mighty torpedoes i love these torpedoes they're 75 knots 77 second reloads really really awesome they just catch people unsuspectingly and the guns cannot turn to catch it because it's so fast colbert's getting up to 55 knots and here we go kremlin one two two salvos right there and let's see if we get the shot right here uh, and of course the Kremlin's going to aim at us, not at our buddy. And boom, look at that. Getting both kills right there. Not oh, Actually, one of our buddies got the, we missed the Stalingrad, we got the Kremlin, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're just a delivery system for torpedoes, and it really just catches the team off guard when you can get situations that. We'll give another example of the Kleber being able to use its speed and torpedoes to really dominate the battlefield. So yeah, I was working for another clam there in the storm, uh, kind of typhoon caliber, and really awesome to see different perspectives and trying it out. But all right, team, in this uh, particular scenario with Shatter, we're now on the southern side. And then this one, with again, with the Kleber. Now, I like the reason why the Kleber is so powerful in these matches because you're going to see the power of the speed in which it allows you to really have maneuverability and flexibility across the battlefield. So the first um, uh, goal we're going to do is have the Kleber do a push right into the Alpha Cap and hold right here at the southern tip of this uh, major island next to Alpha. Reason being because it provides a little bit of concealment from incoming fire from uh, the Alpha North right here, but also it can test the cap and we can hold safely and securely without being having a threat of being either, either, either way, if we get radar, uh, their ships are not in position to take a shot at us anyway. So that's the first thing we want to do, but also allows us to hold the cap to allow our friendlies to actually begin our sweep across the West here. And that's simply the, the, the basic strategy of the, the southern push of Alpha, where we have majority of our ships kind of trying to flank and push slowly while we have the fast ship going and hold Alpha until these friendlies can get in position to overwhelm 
this cap and hopefully single out one ship at a time and if i think the the enemies what they're going to do is also do the same thing well they'll push a destroyer and alpha will both contest and then maybe one of cruiser will proceed in the middle while the battleship kind of lingers in the in the, the center here and we kind of just wait and just single and uh, single-handedly pick off one by one uh or have a group mass fi focus fire on one and that allows you to just uh, uh i would say balance get the, the battlefield at least balanced out because we got to eliminate at least one or two ships at alpha before we can begin our sweep back into bravo or it goes into charlie so that's the idea with the Kleber. Very, very powerful there. Now, the, what is the uh, Charlie team doing? It's going to do a delayed push. So what we'll have is one uh, the uh, radar cruiser hold Charlie, being able to cover... They're using their radar this area to make sure they don't just sneak up on us and we we can react in time. Meanwhile, we'll have the destroyer push out to the far east and spot their other destroyer or give us eyes on Bravo from the east. You definitely need to have situational awareness of where they're at. And you'll have one cruiser in support this way. So that gives us the ability to react and also spot at the same time so we can know, hey, well, where's the enemy at? Because we can't make a educated decision as to where to push if we don't know where the enemy's at. So this is kind of more of a delayed push to find out where are they at, where we're going to overwhelm Alpha. We'll take Alpha. We'll take Charlie. And then we have basically two caps to their one. And they're going to have to make a decision and make a move and make a mistake. Well, how the, the battle actually unfolds is you're going to see that we're going to have to... This this cruiser, radar cruiser, is holding Charlie. will eventually push up and either flank this enemy... As these cruiser and destroyer begins to draw them out, has awesome broadsides and fields of fire. And then, of course, we have the Kleber, who will then eliminate uh, those at Alpha with our flanking force. We'll then proceed uh, through Alpha and then actually begin to take Bravo from behind and win the game. And you're going to see the display of the speed of which the Kleber is giving the flexibility to help out in any given situation like a quick reaction force. So let's take a look at it. Hope you enjoy it. All right, team, here we are now on the southern side of Shatter, and we are, have already started the cap, like I said. We're contesting it with another destroyer at Alpha. Again, he's probably up yep, there. I asked for the radar, and we can see that the Marceau, our sister ship, um, same <laughs> builds and everything, uh, except Marceau's got better guns than we do, but right there, we're, we're contesting. We're just doing what good strategy players do, is we'll contest and hold a, a cap to kind of see what the enemy does and what kind of mistakes they can make. All meanwhile, we're going to wait and delay for our team to actually push through the western side of Alpha so that we can somehow maybe take out this Napoli, which I'm calling for. If you eliminate him, then we have a chance to actually flank in and maybe figure out what this Marceau is going to do. Uh, torpedoes. Uh, our torpedoes only go out to 8 kilometers, so we're going to take a just wild guess to see where they go. But again, our torpedoes are great because they reload so fast. I like the Clubair for that reason. Very, very devastating uh, torpedoes, especially with the quick reloads. We're going to wait. We're not going to chance and waste our HP right here. We don't have any eels. That's a downside with the Club Air. Um, even though it has a French saturation, we got 25,900 HP. It's, I don't want to waste it right off of the bat in this early in this match because we need those HPs maybe later in the game. And that's what a good destroyer player wants to do is survive the long haul of the battle because you're going to be the the key decision maker and the player at the end of the map because you may have to go cap and win everything on points. So that's why I like the Colbert, the speed, the armor, everything. That's a, the ability about it to be flexible to react to the battlefield's given situation. So, as you can see to the eastern side there on the mini-map, we have our Salem and Haraguma going out there chasing down that destroyer as well as spotting their, the uh, enemy spawn. Bravo to see where are they at while we have our Charlie team Puerto Rico waiting in reserve to figure out where do we need to make this push and where is the enemy at. So right now we're just kind of playing around with the Napoli, seeing what he's doing. We're drawing fire from him. I always do like drawing fire, but not too, too long because the Napoli sap seconders are crazy, ridiculous, accurate, and fast reload, and they do pack a wallop and take a lot of damage off of you. Uh, notice we've already like, uh, have been shot at for 177,000 damage right there, so that's a lot of firepower shooting at us. We do not want to take any more unnecessary shots. Right now, we're taking a look at the uh, the team. Uh, our, our friendly team is now slowly engaging Napoli. So we have a three-on-one advantage right here. And this is the kind of situations you want to have. You want to find the situation where you are three versus one, or at least two versus one. Uh, at the very least, so we can get these uh, overwhelming uh, fields of fire or overwhelming a flank 
so that we can then push in and Patrie takes out an Napoli great shot right there watch out for the torpedoes if a Napoli goes and yellows you right there so that's really awesome so now that the enemy uh, Napoli is gone we now have a flank to work with so we're gonna decide to actually turn back around and see if we can bully this Marceau out of this cap because it's being really, really annoying. Uh, meanwhile, on the eastern side, we have the Salem going one-on-one, -on -one, toe to toe with a Stalingrad. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty ballsy right there. Pretty, uh, I didn't realize that, that was going to happen. He goes down to the Stalingrad, overwhelming right there. But we have a Hergumo spotting out in the east. Now we have the Puerto Rico pushing out. We can catch that Stalingrad broadside. That's what we want to do. Meanwhile, we have Marceau shooting from the open here so we're gonna see oh and there's the battleship okay so we're gonna have to make a decision here we have yoshino in the north so our in, our team our friendlies can basically shoot right into the yoshino push him out and we're gonna try to take on this montana now i know my torpedoes i got to get both racks into them because just two sets of racks on the Colbert are not enough to actually take on a full health montana just you might as well have more than less so we're gonna see if we can get both racks into the montana while we wait Call for radar on this Marceau. Figure out where he's at. What's he doing? He is already pointing away from the cap. So I'm waiting for the Marceau. If he's going to get shot over here, we're going to get shots into him right here so he can run away. So he's taking damage. He's probably not going to stick around. I cannot win a gunfight with the Marceau. So I'm going to wait and see if he gets pushed out of the cap and wait for the right moment. It's all about timing in this one right here. So we're going to see, make sure we get the cap first before we actually go and engage because we don't want this cap to get reset. So... Right here, we kick on our engine boost. We got four seconds left. We know we've got the cap now. It's pretty much ours. If we can uh, make this shot and nobody shoots, we're going to get the first rack right there. We got two sets of salvo. Oh, we lose about two of them off the island. I shot a little early. Now, we're going to delay this, this release. We're going to wait until we get a full broadside. And there's four end of them right there. And then we shoot. And do not look at the Montana. Real, real pro players don't look at explosions. And where are we going to get? Montana goes down. And now... That is a great kill right there. We eliminate one battleship off the map, and now we have the Marceau. Nose into a Marceau because it's really difficult with the speed of the Colbert and the maneuverability. It's just really difficult to kill this thing. Nose on, I've noticed that every time I play against a Colbert, you just go nose in. It's so difficult. We lose a set of guns. We got the back turrets are really slow. Do we get this kill? Come on. I, don't, I was expecting torpedoes, and there it is. Nice finishing kill right there. The danger with that maneuver right there was we could have been hit by torpedoes from Marceau. Fortunately, he had already shot them out, maybe, or had them on reload or something, or maybe the torpedo tubes were damaged. We were just lucky right there. And then, pretty much, we're going to go in and flank and overwhelm Alpha. Now, here, I was hoping for Citadels on the Yoshino. This is a great opportunity right here to get some nice AP shots. We're going to get the reload booster going, and this should have been a Citadel, I thought, but nope. But look, we were getting some nice chip damage right there. Just getting as much as we can to eliminate the Yoshino, but he goes down to a fire. And that's how you can nicely broadside and overwhelm that flank uh, and have the Patree out in the west. Again, I think that was out of position right there. But then we can slowly overwhelm and come back to the north. We have our uh, Stalingrad here. Or, sorry, Moskva taking out their Stalingrad getting that nice, juicy broadsides. Meanwhile, this Smolensk made out of paper, super thin armor. And let's see. We're waiting here to get an opportunity to flank the Smolensk because I know our guns can take out these light cruisers very easily. Unfortunately, the Smolensk was smart just nosing into the competition and just wait i was just waiting for that moment but right now we're going to see our moscow take on the stalingrad yep there goes the stalingrad and now hopefully the smallest makes a mistake here he eats our Mar friendly moscow eats our torpedoes which is not what we we're expecting and there is one torpedo right there almost gets him we're waiting for him to go broadside i don't know why we just didn't get that opportunity but he was smart uh he was giving that broadside to our moscow and we're let's see if this penetrates his armor nope He's ricocheted angled just enough where it's just not getting those full pins right there. And we get 2,300. I mean, these AP shells are deadly right there. And we're not going to mess with the Smolensk in case that our Moscow loses. And boom, Patrie gets a nice shot right there. And we take over Bravo. At this point, we're just going to use the speed of the Kleber and just push through and take out every single cap. And there's nothing the Shimakaze can do right there. And you can see, I, I didn't show it, but the, the speed of the Kleber is just so awesome that it gives you the ability to just run around the map and just be a wreck it a racket and just take over every single cap and just be a, so annoying. And you can win clutch games this way um, just by using sheer speed and uh, maneuverability so hope you guys like the video let me know your thoughts uh, in the comments below like subscribe bell button below and appreciate it. we'll get some more uh, battles out there i'm going to start murking out a lot more and uh, trying to play with some typhoon and uh, uh, storm players and, and just seeing different perspectives there and i, I want to see different play styles 
uh, as opposed to being stuck in uh, a gale and squall sometimes in my client. Again, we're just you know normal players. Uh, we're nothing uh, cosmic. We're not king of the seas. But I do like going around and just talking with other players and clans and seeing their perspective on the game because it's always about learning and getting better. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope you got something out of it and any value. But as always, you guys stay safe. Say hi out there and uh, be safe. Cheers.